Hi there and welcome to my June wrap in which I reflect on both the quality and the quantity of what I read this month. Now in terms of quantity, I read 9 or 10 novels depending on how one counts them, 3 examples of life writing, 4 short stories and 1 book length critical work. So let's begin by talking about the novels I read. First up, as part of my effort to read all the Japanese novels on my shelf, I have 13 or so, we have Haruki Murakami's Dance Dance Dance. I made a video about this, so I won't say too much here. It was a page turner. It did have its own offbeat sense of humour and some good characters, but ultimately it's pretty disappointing. Then I read another Murakami novel, Sputnik Sweetheart. This one's much shorter. It was actually much worse than Dance Dance Dance. It didn't have, in my view, any positive qualities. It focuses on a dysfunctional love triangle between a man and two women and yes nothing in this book really worked. I have one more Murakami Norwegian Wood to read. My expectations at this point are very low but I'll try and get through that in July. Then the other Murakami, Ryu Murakami with his 69. This was so funny. One of the funniest books I've read in years, if not ever. I made a video about this too. Can't say enough good things about it. If you're into punk, if you're into attitude, if you're into teenage rebellion, then this is a spectacular read. Then a much deeper, deep river, no pun intended actually, but it's Shusako Endo, sometimes known as the Graham Green. Japanese letters. Graham Greene was actually a great fan of Endo's work. This was wonderful. It's not that often actually that when I'm reading a novel it will make me question the way I lead my own life but the opening depiction of a married man and his reaction to the death of his wife did have me pondering some of my own behaviour and whether I am actually the best person I can really be. And the entire novel was really well pieced together. Each of the characters we really saw deeply into their hearts. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I have two more of his novels to get through. Then finally this one, The Moai Island Puzzle by Alice Arisagawa. It's a pseudonym, so it's actually written by a man. And this one I did not finish. I'm not sure if it's the author's or the translator's fault. Perhaps both of them are culpable. But it simply had no style. The dialogue was particularly wooden and after 20 pages or so I just called it quits and put it down. Okay those are the Japanese novels. Now for the rest. Next up we have children's literature and this book was recommended to me by one of my students. Scott O'Dell's Island of the Blue Dolphins. It's based on a true story of a Native American woman who survived for 18 years alone on a tiny island off the coast of California in the mid 19th century. It was really well constructed and a great piece of nature writing. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I made a video about this too if you're interested. Then Alice Walker, now is the time to open your heart. This was a good read but ultimately it lacked depth. It tried to do too much in my view. I also made video about this. It was a very productive month as you can see in terms of producing content. Now the semester is over. Yes I did enjoy this book. Alice Walker is a fine writer but there was something yes just unfinished and kind of superficial about it. Then we have this. Louis Sepulveda's Un Viejo Que Lea Novelas de Amor. The Old Man Who Read Love Stories. This has some interesting parallels with Walker's novel. Walker has a section set in the Amazon where the members of the circle take ayahuasca. In this book we have the genuine article, the old man taking ayahuasca with the Shua Indians, a tribe from Ecuador. And Sepulveda spent seven months living with this tribe and draws upon their knowledge for this work. And this is orders of magnitude greater than Walker's novel. It was absolutely superb, very short, just a hundred pages or so and it focuses on the life of the old man of the title and his memories 
help construct this history of kind of colonial penetration of the Amazon. There was so much to admire about it. I started reading in the Spanish, but when we got into the section set in the jungle, there were just too many names of plants and animals that I was unfamiliar with, and so I switched to English and enjoyed it just as much. It was a magnificent translation too by Peter Bush. I'm going to make a review of this, but it's highly recommended. And finally, we have this, to make a Kincaid's Annie John, a Bildungsroman of her life growing up on the island of Antigua. It ends with her just setting sail for England. It was extremely well written, and I can understand why many readers would love this book. I just found it rather lacking in any innovation. It felt as if the last hundred years of literary history had just passed Kincaid by. Okay, those are all the novels I read this month. Let's turn our attention to life writing. So first we have another book by Louis Sepulveda, Full Circle, A South American Journey. It's not strictly speaking a memoir, rather it's bits and pieces of writing he'd accumulated over the years, which taken together trace the course of his life. As you'd expect, it's rather uneven. There are, however, some real gems here. A brilliant comic chapter on the difficulties of transporting the corpse of a powerful man in a light aircraft to its destination hundreds of miles away. That was magnificent. And the chapters on Sepulveda's childhood, his political imprisonment, and his eventual escape from Chile were also extremely compelling. The next two examples of life writing are both illness narratives. First, we have Martha Wyman Lear's Echoes of Heart Sounds, a memoir. This is a sequel to her Heart Sounds, which recounted the hospital experience of her late husband, Hal, a doctor, and the appalling treatment he received in the wake of a massive heart attack in Echoes of Heart Sounds. Martha herself, decades later having remarried, has a heart attack of her own and is taken to the same hospital and placed under the care of the same doctor. This allows her to compare the treatment decades previously to treatment today and see the enormous amount of progress that has been made. But we also see how, understandably, present events are entangled with those of the past. Martha was previously a writer for popular magazines, and each chapter reads like a feature article. They're very enjoyable, very punchily written, but ultimately this doesn't contribute anything significant to the genre of illness narratives. By way of contrast, the next book is regarded as one of the best illness narratives ever produced. It's Jean-Dominique Bobé's The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. If you're not aware of this book, it came out in English translation in 1997 and truly caused a sensation, and rightly so. It recounts the experience of Bobé, the French editor of Our Magazine, who at the age of 43 suffered a massive stroke that resulted in locked-in syndrome. His mind was intact, as were his memories, but he was almost completely paralysed. He had a little motion in his neck and he was capable of blinking his left eye. And it was with his eye that he transmitted this memoir to an amanuensis and left us with a beautiful parting gift because he died just one year after his stroke. It's a miraculous work of literature, truly. It's so poetic. You would imagine a person caving in to complete an utter despair in these terrible circumstances. Instead, he produces such a beautiful, generous work of art. If you haven't read it, I strongly recommend that you do The Diving Bell and The Butterfly. I read four short stories this month, three of which came from this, Charles Beaumont's Perchance to Dream. He was a writer for The Twilight Zone, I believe he wrote the scripts for some 20 or so episodes, and all of these stories are suitably weird. The first three in this book were very enjoyable. I'll see what the rest are like and report back. The other short story I read was in French by a writer called Jean Giono, and I'll try and pronounce it in French, probably not very well, but it's L'homme qui plante des arbres, The Man Who Planted Trees. This short story, it's only 15 pages or so, is often taken to be non-fiction, but it is in fact 
a fiction and it concerns a man on a holiday in the French Alps who meets a shepherd and after being taken into his dwelling notices that he's sorting seeds and he accompanies the shepherd and discovers that he has this personal project of planting trees and then the warriors intervene the narrator returns to the scene and is greeted by of course the sight of practically an entire forest that has grown up during his absence it was a great way to practice my french but it was also a good piece of writing i read it in english afterwards okay the one critical work i read was pascal casanova's the world republic of letters which is quite important if you're studying global literature that was my justification an enjoyable enough read and there we have it that was my reading month how was yours if you read any great books in the month of June, I'd love to know what they were. Why not tell me in the comments below? But all that remains now is for me to nominate my book of the month and then bid you farewell. So I'm going to go with Lewis Sepulveda's The Old Man Who Read Love Stories. As great as The Diving Bell and The Butterfly is, I had read it before. Whereas Sepulveda was a brand new name to me and his book really blew me away. It was just magical and it was set in one of the places on earth I'm most interested in, the Amazon. So that is my book of the month and now as promised I shall say goodbye, be safe, be strong and I shall see you anon. Nanu nanu.